All right, let's bring him in. We've been waiting for him all week. Norm McDonald. Hey, hey Norm. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Hello, nice Sarah. Hi, how are you? Are you Mwah. Ooh, you're scratchy. Oh, yeah, I didn't shave. You've got the, uh, the Miami Vice look going on there. Yeah, baby. <laughs> is that what he has? No, is this your babysitter? Who, who, who what, we got that's here? What, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, how are you? He's a stand-up comedian, too. And he's performing with you at Tommy T's. Yeah, what's M mean? Are you I'm looking McDonald's. at my cans. Yeah, the M for for McDonald. No, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> what are you talking it is, about? Those are your headphones. Oh, we saved my, them from right. the last time. I have time. to look at right and left. Hey, you're I, you you're know, doing I, a full examination. Your, the cans. These are called cans. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I did actually. I've heard that. You heard that? I did hear that. It's before. an industry term. Yeah. yeah, it's inside stuff though. Sure. That's no, not inside. I learned it out. These of, are uh, cans, baby. Those, these are just headphones. Uh, no one can see that though. Hey, look, there's a camera. There is a camera. Um, yeah, no, I learned that on WKRP in Cincinnati. Oh, did they call them cans on yeah. WKRP? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. recall that specifically. You know, I just, God, I loved that show when I was a kid. Have, yeah. Well, I was into... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm saying because uh, the radio thing, radio. Sure. Right, no, and I... I liked I'm Lonnie sure it inspired Anderson, all the people to get into radio, sure, that let's, show. let's get into radio. It'll be fantastic. Hey, you want to do the theme song? It's, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I don't know it. I don't know it either. WKRP in Cincinnati. Maybe yeah. it did inspire you to get into radio. Well, did I, it? I don't know. It didn't. Uh. What inspired me was my failure to be a rock star. Uh. Then I said, I think uh, radio. Why not? Yeah. And I can roll the hits at least. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but then you know you get into radio and there it's a. Uh, you get kind of sour toward music because you realize what a what an industry it is. Oh, well, you do? Yeah. You know why I got sour toward music? Really? How? Because I got an iPod, oh. and I put all my favorite songs on them, and then I listened to them like 10,000 times each, and now I don't like any of them. Yeah. So and then, then you got to go buy... Then what do you do? Well, you buy 500 more 99-cent songs. No, 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 but they're all my favorite songs of, all, of my life. Well, you You've have to worn them, them out. You've worn them out. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying you got to meet them out better? Well, you know, here's the thing. Wait, he the, looks uh, different than last time. Yes, he does look different. <laughs> it's, it's amazing that you notice that. He's smaller, <laughs> but just as bald. Yeah, as he has boy. a name. Yeah, no. He does have a name. <laughs> so now, do you remember the last time you were here? Yeah, of course it, I You do so many radio stations, though. No, how no, is that, I, how I is that possible? I remember you, because oh. you're so pretty. Oh. And she just grabbed herself in front of you. <laughs> she did do a can Well, I grabbed thing. through, the can grab. through like a sweatshirt and two well, Still, sweaters. guys are, you know, we notice that stuff. We don't often see girls I was making a cans joke. <laughs> Steve, what is happening here? Know, You're not doing the good enough job babysitting. Oh, you didn't get to see? Here, I couldn't right. see. Oh, Let there me just we go. pull Thank it up. Because Vinny will tell you, I'm just a big flasher. <laughs> you know what it is about you, though, Norm, is that uh, you're always smiling, but it's those piercing eyes. Uh, what? Like, I actually get really nervous when I'm around you because you're so you do? piercing. Yeah, totally. People what about me? I got, I got Patrick Stewart on my right over here. <laughs> yeah, that's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> that's because you look exactly like him. So you guys are doing a people couple... Think every, I'm sorry. Oh, no, please go no, ahead. No, go, go. I was going to just reiterate that you're at Tommy T's. Ah, uh, no. Get your plugs that. in there. Oh, yeah, we're at Tommy T's, man. You ever go there? Uh, no, I've never been to Tommy T's. Uh, if you like comedy... We can get you in. You can? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. I would love that. Uh, we're actually going to... Uh... If you like steak... Oh, do they have good steak at Tommy oh T's? Oh my God! Very now, good steak. when you're doing Tommy T's, do you uh, do they put you up in a hotel out there and, and feed you steak? Is that the, is that like part of the? Is that how they the, lure you in? Right, the Benny's packet. They put us up at the craziest, biggest hotel I've ever seen in my life. Honest to God, they had two basketball courts and three swimming pools. in Pleasanton. Yeah, in this little tiny, in this sleepy burg, they have a a, a party that had like. Maybe a thousand or two thousand people at this party, at the Hilton Hotel in Pleasant. And did you go down and you know, no. I'm Norm McDonald. Hello from TV. I'm no. in your TV. I don't go to parties. You don't no. go to parties? Why not? Why not? Are you socially awkward? Wait, let yeah. him answer. Why not? Why don't so, you go yeah. to parties? I don't care. If, uh, yeah, I, I would say I'm socially very awkward. Is that because yeah. you're famous? Yeah, You've always oh, that been a little help. awkward. That doesn't help. But, right. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like uh, I don't like talking to people about stuff at parties, especially now with the politics. <laughs> oh, I know everybody, everybody wants, wants to, talk, to politics. talk politics, and people are so un unreasonable about it. Yeah, you know they are. This why can't this they see year. it my way? Wait, yeah, <laughs> you're saying that. Yeah, that just came out of you. I'm including myself in oh, this okay. whole thing. I I'm completely unreasonable about it. I know I you know. 
I'm Bring bo- up Sarah Palin to her and watch her no, melt no, down. No, no, watch no, it. No. Watch it's the not, show no. that is the meltdown. It's, I'm not going to melt down. I'm okay. talking with Norm Macdonald and his babysitter, Steve. Yes. <laughs> oh, Steve. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Sarah Palin is an odd, odd case. Odd case. In what way? <laughs> <laughs> Since you hate talking about goes. politics. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, it's just odd. It's ne- it's it's un uh, it's 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 unbelievable. Be- yes, it's never before been anything like this. No, ever. there hasn't. Yeah, it's like they should have got one of the school teachers at my kid's school. That would have been great. It been about She's the got same. lots of experience working with children. <laughs> That's what they're saying now. Yeah, that she had a lot of experience because she was a mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, she's got five kids. She's doing awesome with them too. And the names, fantastic. This is see. This is what's problem with our society, though. What when, is it? When they go, hey, the hardest job in the world is being a mom. It is or the hardest hard. job in the world is being a teacher. It's hard, hard jobs. No, it's not. They're hard jobs. My oh. mom, my mom was a teacher. Let me she tell you something. She had the two something. hardest jobs. In the, I think she had the easiest is a job. job. The teacher is probably the easiest job on the planet. Why? Let me How explain can you why. say that? First of all, my mother and my father were both teachers. They got all the uh, you get all the vacations that children do. Mm-hmm. You're always off. You have the entire <laughs> summer. You have two weeks Christmas, two weeks Easter. Um, you, you work in a, an atmosphere where it's just you and children. With young, stupid, <laughs> with short, stupid people. Yeah. Really, they don't know much. You're brilliant. Yeah. You don't have to learn anything. They're all frightened of you. You can say anything you want. You never take a test. See, I don't know if you've ever That's gone. That's true. I go now. When I was a kid, I thought my teachers were so smart. Now I have a kid. I meet these teachers. They're, they're not smart at all. How can you say that? <laughs> because it's true. They're just like regular goofy people. Well, that's, and they that's have what the, you And they have the only... Uh, my kid's teacher went crazy, and they could not fire her because of... Uh, because the job's so hard, the kids made her crazy. <laughs> yeah, but she has whatever you call it, tenure. They don't have that in any other job. No, I know. They have a union that has a stranglehold on... Uh, they got to fire you before your tenure starts. Yeah. That's one of the They're things. They're going to fire you from the easiest job ever. And then mom is the second easiest job. How, how is yeah, that? Yeah, how do you figure that mom out? Mom is a tough job. That is a tough job. But it's not a job. You know? That's not a job. Well, it's what you have to do. Isn't anything you have to do job-esque? Well, then I guess... The Just because t- I don't get paid for it doesn't make it any less a job. Well, I guess the toughest job in the world is a marathon runner. Right. Or having a cold is a tough job. <laughs> You know, it's tough. It can be. You got a headache, runny nose. It's not easy. I want to be president. And they're, those, the babysitter's funny. Those are anyway. heroes. Those are also the heroes. They're like the real heroes are the moms and the teachers. Well, they are. They not he- the guys on know. Iwo Jima planting a flag. Okay, they were heroes, too. <laughs> not the firemen that run into buildings. No, no. No one's denying that those people are heroic. <laughs> It's a person that a good, shows up at a school and a is the tallest teacher. person in the class. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. That's I'm, a good I'm one, you guys. You, my mom and dad were both teachers. It's the simplest job in the world. When I was a kid, I thought everyone got that many that much vacation. I was, like, shocked to learn that you – I thought everyone had the summer off. I thought everyone had three weeks <laughs> off for Christmas. Well, when you're doing your own sitcom, surely you have six months a year off. I oh, mean, that yeah, has to be teacher-esque. Exactly, exactly. it's teacher-esque. They, don't they say that having a sitcom is about the closest you that's can about, get? That's about the hardest job in the world. No, shut up. Yeah, those are that's the real easy, heroes. That's easy, fun. <laughs> oh, my God. You're making the people laugh. <laughs> is it easy or is it hard? What, doing a sitcom? Yeah, and be, be... It's retired work. It's the easiest thing on the planet. They say it's the be- it's the closest to a regular schedule. It's It makes your life very normal. Yeah, it's very simple. I mean, almost everything in show business is easy. This yeah. isn't... This is the hardest job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the real, you're the real hero. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, this is Aaron Vinny, the Alice Morning Show, and Norm MacDonald. And Steve, whose last name you didn't even give me. You're just calling him oh, Steve. Oh, Stevie Ray Fromsey. Don't you have to reset or something? I just did. I just reset. Oh, that I said the name of the station and who's here. Uh, Stevie Ray Fromsey? Yeah. Fromstein. Stevie Ray Fromstein. Fromstein. He's got one of those, what are those called? Uh, cur- Jewish Courier names. caps. <laughs> Jewish no, I'm talking about the cap, like the paper boy cap. Is that, what's that called? It's called a, a like a paper boy cap. Have those come back? And then I they just are, them? well, in, I wear them. I got a hat here in, uh, in uh, San Francisco. I got, uh, 
talking about the cap, like the paper boy cap. Is that what's that called? It's called a, a like a paper boy cap. Have those come back? And then I they just are, missed them. Well, then I wear them. I got a hat here in uh, in uh, San Francisco. I got a campaigner hat. You ever wear a campaigner hat? No. You know what that is? No. Uh, you remember the, you know, it's flat and it's like straw. Yeah, I do know what he's talking oh. about. Oh, yeah. yeah, and they yeah. would pin the pin their little. Uh, I like Ike buttons on the on the band well, in the old days. Yeah, in right. the band. Yeah, on the band. Well, Nowadays, like they have Ike. big crazy. Hats. If I had hair, I would wear hair. But, would you? <laughs> but I don't, so I wear a hat. <laughs> so you uh, wear the. My head gets cold. All the time. I how don't come know how you do Vinny's it. head doesn't get cold? That's what I'm wondering. You actually wondering. have some hair. I mean, if I didn't I have, know yeah. that you just told me right. you don't have hair under there, I can see sideburns. There's, uh, there's some on this. I even have some. A little bit. Oh, no. You don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, read Michelle. that text, too. Oh, wait, hold wait, on. Wait, I didn't show you the whole thing. There's a bit. 925 says, okay, Norm, come to my fifth grade class. I dare you. Uh, well, uh, well, where does she? Is it? In a, is, are there black people there? <laughs> oh my God! Where what does the nine two five? Well, Why is it harder if there's black because people there? Because black people are generally poor, and poor people are generally dangerous. <laughs> oh my God! Wow, I can't Norm! You just went there. What? Black people are rich. Black, they're black people <laughs> span all the strata. No, 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 no. And you, you're saying you, you, you got to check your statistics. And, oh no, my black God. people. Are poorer than white people. You didn't know that. <laughs> are you telling Norm. me that you think black? <laughs> what I'm saying is that I don't. I try not to pigeonhole people into, into black people truth. are poor, not into the truth. But, but listen, there's a huge ignored middle class of black population out there. How dare you say black people are poor and therefore dangerous? Because I want them to be not poor. That's why. And really, how are you gonna? What's your plan? My plan is to first of all uh, admit that the the black people have less money than white people, because we black live in people, a racist society. Our phone society. number is eight hundred four hundred FM ninety seven. If you'd like to talk with Norm McDonald, I'm sure he'd love to take your call. Absolutely, right now. <laughs> Michelle, you're on the air. Oh. I just want to say that was one of the funniest things I've ever heard. And you need what that black people not, are poor? It's no, hilarious. The, the teacher thing, and oh. you need to probably act like you're not offended by that because, first, you don't have a right to act like you're offended. And that was funny as hell. He is right about black people being poor. You know it. I know it. Oh, and my God. What it. has happened on this show? <laughs> Steve, well, he taught us a lot today. I think moms. Oh, it's is, a learning show. Moms well, an easy job. Teachers an easy job. Where have you guys been job. living for the last 300 years Steve, in this country? Steve, you're on the air. Normie. Yeah, hey, baby. Hey, you were awesome on the Bob Saget road. Oh, thanks, man. That's nice of you to say. You're the best all time on the roast, actually. Oh, really? Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> all right, hold on. Paris, you are on the air. I think that that is completely untrue. Go How on. Can, not all black people are poor. Amen. Sister? White. Well, I didn't say that. That's what you No, said. you said I black said people black have people less money have than less white people. money than white people. You've yeah. been to West Virginia? Because there's some white people with no money there. Well, exactly. Well, okay, okay. You're saying one black person is uh, has more money than one yeah, white okay, person? Like, what True. about Eddie Murphy? Yeah, what about Eddie Murphy? You're yeah. saying by and large, no, you're right. if, if you break right. it down. You're right. <laughs> yeah, of course, black people have less money than white people. In like a, as not an average, true. not all black people have less money than white. Uh, oh but he's talking God. in general. Okay. Oh we God. all get what he's listen, saying. Listen, 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 listen. Guys in wheelchair. There's a guy in a wheelchair that can go faster than me in a race. But if I said guys in wheelchairs are generally slower than me, you know? Come the on. way you said it was so harsh. That to <laughs> Give say, your head a shake. Give your head a shake. <laughs> oh my God! All right, thank you. Hey, it's Danielle from Big Brother. Famously black woman. Uh, <laughs> my 40 acres in a mule. I mean, my 40 acres in a mule. But Exa you know what? He's right. <laughs> he yeah. right. Go on, Danielle. I mean, if you think School about us. it, there's been cases where uh, the same person will apply for a job, and at times the other race gets the higher pay. I'm just keeping it real, folks. The All right. Thank you, Danielle. Absolutely. Chunky, yeah. you're on. Good morning, <laughs> Abnormal. How are you? How are you, Chunky? Mm -hmm. Hey, uh... What about Mexicans? Are they hard workers? And are Jews stingy? What, what's the rest of it? And why don't white people have any culture in this country? And I totally hear you about the iPod. I'm sick of all my songs, too. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. All right, I to am. sum it all up, Norm MacDonald. <laughs> well, I'm saying that uh, having less... Try to offend everyone equally. Ha having less money or having or, or not having less money is not a, na is not a product of your, of your nature. It's... it's 
It's it's it's that you don't have the money because the white people don't give you the money. <laughs> It's actually <laughs> supportive of black people to say that, actually. 707 of course says... I'm supportive of black people. These, I'm, in a, wow. I'm in a room of You're racists. You're saying that to, to have justice, oh, we should my all God. have equal, uh... The 415. <laughs> the 415 says maybe we That's should educate funny. our children a la Lord of the Flies. Norm, just throw all the kids on an island and let them sort out their own society. I can't read that. Yeah, that would probably be better. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> sure, throw them in there and just let the weak, sur- the weak uh, be killed and the strong survive. And Jews no, that's what. Listen, money. that's I mean, what. That's, that's what. That's is. what we're doing as adults. That you know, we're uh, we're doing that as adults. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. We are. I just got handed a note. <laughs> Do you want to keep him for the next segment? At this point, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm finding Norm to be uh, somewhat on the offensive side. You know what, though? I love that he's saying all this stuff and then looks over with a big smile. I know, and big a, smile. A he's like, oh, man, they're going to talk about this all day. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't know that everyone. I thought I thought uh, San Francisco was a little more open than... Uh, no, San Francisco actually they're isn't. They're racist? Isn't, no, they're not racist. <laughs> Well, so far, so far, by the way, most people have agreed with me. <laughs> Lindsay, you're on the air. Hey, Norm. <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. Hi, I teach fifth grade. Uh huh. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's hard. I mean, <laughs> and black people are rich. And I have some black kids in my class that are way richer and way smarter than some of the white kids. So. Okay. Well, you know what. Black people are are richer than white people. Thank I, you. I made a mistake. Thank you, John. You're on the air. Hey, Norm. Hey. Hey, man. You were you were easily the greatest thing that ever happened at Saturday Night Live. Ah, uh, thanks, man. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, the say. greatest the greatest updates ever. You did Howard Letterman. Uh, All right, cool. thank you, John. All right, here's you know what we're what? gonna do. Oh. What? Go ahead. I, Go ahead. Are we gonna do another segment with him or not? I almost think we have to. Because I actually was in the audience when I, you know how I went to Saturday Night Live that one time? I do, and this is one of you my favorite You did the stories. update. All right, yeah. hold on, yeah, hold yeah. that thought. We uh-huh. are going to take a quick break. When we come back, Norm and his babysitter Steve will still be here <laughs> offending Frumstein. people left and right. <laughs> Stevie Ray from We're not offending anyone but racists. How do you figure? To make a sweeping generalization that belittles gen- and it it's is. It's not a sweeping generalization. It's a statistical fact, and it belittles no one. It, <sighs> it only it only states a fact that I hope we can change in this country. If we're going to pretend that black and white people make the same amount of money, then uh, then nothing will ever change. Come on, you know that. Can't we just see it as everybody? <laughs> well, we can see it any way you <laughs> want it. If you want to, Sarah's pretend. looking for some if you want clean to live in a fantasy out. world, am, and I'm you're sh- not going to find no, it. No, there's right. not a clean out. You're digging. I'm breaking. You're digging deeper we'll and deeper. be back. Allison 97.3, Norm Macdonald, and Stevie Ray Fromstein are sitting in here with us. The texts are great. Yes. And thanks for the phone calls to 800-400-FM97. You can talk to Norm if you like. All right, our text number is 25423. You can call us at 800-400-3697. A text from the 650. I'm a black woman, and Norm is right and hysterical. Sarah, you're living in a fantasy land if you think we're all equals. 805 says, rude. I'm a second grade teacher, and I hate you. <laughs> rude. That sounds like a second grade teacher. <laughs> uh, no, Jimmy, that was just rude. Can oh, you yeah, think of another way to, to say a, that? To be a second grade teacher, you just have to be smarter than a second grade student. <laughs> That's about the only thing you have to be. Oh, wow. Yeah, basically, you need third grade intelligence. <laughs> to teach second grade. You know everything that they need to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a fourth grade teacher, need, you know, if you're hey, a third grade a teacher, question. you need fourth grade. Here's a question. I don't want you, any more of your questions. No. No. What, why, why do I always hear this from uh, women? Okay, what? That women make less money than men. I don't believe that that's, that's true racist. in every case. And I don't it's, believe that is Of course racist. not true in every case. <laughs> not true for me. Yeah, no, yeah. not not the case in this room. Exactly. I think things are changing, and see, I think that when see, it comes I to think, racism, things are changing, I think too. That black I, I'm lady, trying to look for the positive. I, I think that black lady made a good point. That Which you, one? Uh, that I'm living in fantasy land? I think her name was Ruth, land. that you're living in a fantasy land because the black people that you encounter probably make a lot of money. Anyway. 707 on a text says, <laughs> I wish I was a fly on the wall during that last break. I think I heard Sarah yelling uh, at Norm up here in Healdsburg. I wasn't yeah, yelling. Every, every black no, person Sarah. I interview in this program has lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, she actually said she was wrong during that break. Yeah, which never has happened. No, I uh, said, ever. what I said was, I'll just say I'm wrong. Oh. So we could stop, because me and Steve were getting into it. Me and Norm, forget it. Norm didn't even. <laughs>
I want to talk to her and they're like, you went, no, I'm just going to sit here and watch, watch the soup I've seasoned yeah. come to a boil. <laughs> and stare at you with my piercing blue eyes. Oh, hey, can I just talk to you for one second about SNL and, and oh, about... Oh, yeah, please tell the so story, will I, you? I had never been, and I'm a huge fan uh-huh. going way back uh-huh. from the first year on. And I got to see you do uh, the Weekend report. Update. And the way they brought you out was very timely and you sort of sat down and you were pretty pretty calm and collected and then right as they were about to announce you which i guess you had timed out you went when they say my name go effing crazy and then they said your name and it was like exactly timed out to we're live and it just was so amazing the way you guys have that whole thing Timed out perfectly. Yeah. Is that, that, did you like well, that? You experience? shouldn't tell people that because now other people will do it. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like one of the that actually seems like a hard job to me. I actually feel nervous when I watch Saturday Night Live. Yeah, it's not a hard job, man. You guys, but you must <laughs> get Lord used to God. it. Why? Let me tell you something. I uh, I, I tarred roofs. I worked in a logging camp. I worked at an oil rig. I know what hard jobs are. These are not hard jobs at all. This is play. This is fun. This is anybody would kill to do the job you're doing because it's not it's not hard in any way. Mentally, it is a little taxing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel taxing. I, I feel a little tired after the <laughs> after this job. And you called. What did he say about doing sitcoms? It's retirement work. Right. So you are what waiting for someone to call for your next retirement gig? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm just, yeah, I don't pretend that it's a hard job in any way. How does that work, though? Do you get, I mean, could you just throw your name in the hat and they'll offer you another sitcom? Well, there are or... no sitcoms anymore, so that's I've noticed problem. that. It yeah. seems like there's uh, Three and a Half Men and Samantha Who, and that's uh, basically it. Yeah. Unless you want to do something kind of racy on HBO that only lasts 22 fripping minutes and... It... <laughs> What's the matter, bro? I Steve, get mad, you know? These, those Stevie, shows end so fast. Stevie was a sitcom writer. He's part of the reason that sitcoms have died. <laughs> have <around>. died. <laughs> have died off. Which ones yeah. did you write for? Uh, Roseanne, Grace Under Fire. Wow, two Roseanne was big. And two guys I love and Roseanne. a girl and a pizza place. And a pizza oh, place. you did? Yeah. That's so funny. I was. Uh, I, I watched that the first season. I liked that show. Oh, and yeah? then everyone was like, oh, that show's like, oh. Like, really? Like, it's kind of cute. Yeah, it was a cute show. Yeah. It was it, funny. You wrote for Grace Under Fire, huh? Yes. Brett Butler walked out of here on me one time. Oh, really? Yeah, called you me a lucky. racist and left. <laughs> you were lucky. It <laughs> <laughs> would have been worse. She could have stayed. <laughs> well, no, she got mad because apparently she only wants chicks. Uh, she she didn't want to talk to me about any of the, the stuff that people know her for. Like, you know, she was. I just watched her on, we were watching her that morning on Mornings on 2, huh. and she's talking to the cute guy that hosted about her fake boobs and all the, you know, all these things. So I, we we're just chatting and I'm like, so tell me, you know, you wrote this book and there's this whole thing going on with your chest. And she's like, I was having fun until just now. Uh, really? Really? Oh, wow. Well, maybe you should just leave that. that. That's a lie. She wasn't having fun. Yeah, I know. She's one of those people that uh, kind of, you know, those half smart people that think they're smart. She's, like me. She's yeah. like that. Not like mm. you at all. You're, you're very smart. You're very smart. You just have I a could least, teach like at fourth least grade, three right? quarters. At least three quarters. None, none of this half business. Let's take a couple of uh, <laughs> of calls here. Actually, uh, a couple texts. If you only need three, third grade intelligence to teach second grade, I wonder what Norm would say about me, a preschool teacher. <laughs> well, it's kind of obvious. And the 503 says, <laughs> Norm, thanks for Dirty Work. Still one of the greatest movies ever. What, what do I need to teach children how to nap? <laughs> Nina, you're on Ambien, I think. Hey, how you guys doing? Hi. Good, what's happening? Yeah, listen, the status in the society today is white man, black man, white woman, black woman. That's, you you that's think that's how, the hierarchy? That is the hierarchy. I actually have been doing HR statistical analysis for 13 years, and the perfect example of that is they're going to elect a black African-American president before they elect a white woman or a black woman African um, a president. I okay. agree. That's a I agree. Example right there. I agree completely with what she's saying. That that hierarchy yeah. is exactly right. So it's no matter exactly what, if you're a man, you're at an advantage, and no yeah, matter what, I if mean, you're a woman, black or white, yeah, you're at a disadvantage. We, we, women, we do everything, and we get no credit, we get no pay. you got to go out there and get it. I mean, I get my money because I act like a guy when I'm asking for a raise, and women ought to start doing that. You know, show me the money. Yeah, let's all do the Cuba Gooding Jr. dance. Yeah, show me the absolutely. money. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Nina. Let's start our own, uh, let's start our own movement, shall we? Uh, you got it. And by the way, the hardest job Spurred on by Norm McDonald's. 
it, the hardest job in the world is HR because I have to deal with squirrely people on a daily basis. Ah, <laughs> squirrely. All right, thanks, Nina. <laughs> okay, hey, bye. Thank you. Means. Laura, you're on. People squirrely. who don't want to come out and say anything. Hi, everyone. Thing, like Hi, there. Hi, I just wanted to give some love to Norm, put all the intense talk aside because I know, he's Norm so bitchy is just today, hilarious. Isn't he? It's not intense. He's smiling and laughing and sitting back and laughing as Sarah just <laughs> turns it's bright mad. red. <laughs> I know. That's I don't understand why people get so upset when he's just making observations of what he sees in daily life. All right, thank you. 925 says, this show's great. Norm is so freaking funny from The Working Mom, Oh, yes. which I think so means she's a mom and job. works. That's tough, boy. Uh, Maggie, you're on the air. It says here, being a teacher, super duper hard work. Uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I was an attorney for several years. I went to Bolt Law School, and I quit being an attorney to be a teacher. And being a teacher is much more difficult work. Is it super duper hard? That's what it says here. Uh, you know, I, I did not say super duper hard. That was either a uh, human. Yeah, human put that in your subject <laughs> line. There. Uh, and one final thing Why's, here. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to ask her why it was such hard work. But no, I hung not. up on her, yeah. Right. Jeff, you're on. You get the last word. Yeah, hi, Norm. Hey, Jeff. Big fan. Been oh, a big thanks. fan ever since. Love, you used to love your sitcom, even. Oh, I was uh, sad to see it go. My favorite line on that was, but you're a huge whore. <laughs> um, and I was wondering, uh, were you a voice on The Family Guy? Is there a little catchphrase? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did play death on The Family Guy. Uh, the 415 says, uh, Sarah is an uptake bitch living in fantasy land. She's keeping her cool because Norm is there, but if it were anyone else, she'd be throwing her usual fit. Norm rules. Uh, and, uh, Sarah, you, no. do, you do look a little like you're about to. I know. I you're, get you mad. look a little restrained. Well, unfortunately, but you're passionate. You're passionate, and that's what makes you so attractive to me sometimes. Really? It does. You have, you have a lot of passion. I'm all bundled up today, too. But I can tell you got passion. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, Norm and Steve. <laughs> this is our first fight. <laughs> I'm kicking you guys out of here now. Uh, we actually have to break here at Tommy T's all weekend oh, long. Sweet, it is yeah. great to see you oh, next you time. Too. I'll be more prepared for your stunning statements that <laughs> just came out of left field. <laughs> I have to say, I get so pissed because I can. Are you going to rethink I, it now that everybody agrees with me? In the no, world? we're not going to rethink it at all. You're not going to. You know what? Like she's going to have a better that, argument next time. Yes, is that's what right. It'll I'm going to fight this fight <laughs> mentally for the next six months. Sarah and Vinny. On Alice at 97.3. Norm McDonald. Oh, that, Nothing, man. Hobbs all weekend long. Hello, Norm. Hi, honey. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good, man. It's good I'll, to see you again. I slept you, one hour You last sat night. down a little daintily, too. Are you? Did you work out and no, I, I only, rinse your back? Or? I only slept an hour. Mm -hmm. Why? What were you doing all night? I had insomnia. Oh. So it wasn't even like you were having fun up on that. No, I just ate. I just ate all the stuff for my mini bar, <laughs> and stayed up all night in your hotel. Yeah, I ate a. I ate a big uh, jar of cashews that you have to like open in a very odd way. It's about, it's about a half a pound of cashews in my <laughs> belly right now. <laughs> well. That's dumb. Why do they put good stuff in those mini bars? <laughs> well, why don't you not eat the stuff that's there? I well, mean, because I was, I had f f six hours where I couldn't sleep. So I, you, you I got try him. lying down and closing your eyes because that, and turn the lights off. Yeah, I did I that. Find that actually helps. I did that. But also the the guy, like I couldn't get a wake up call, so I was kind of uh, fr freaked out because the uh, front desk guy, who was some uh, of some. Uh, English was not his first language. Mm -hmm. Where are you staying? You know you're a star, right? Don't he can't say where he's staying because I'm sure. He's <laughs> well, there okay, all that's right. I mean, but seriously, really, you know all the girls so anyways, will descend on him. There was a suite. I was in a. I'm in a suite, but the my, my phone only rings in the suite part, not the one beside my bed. Oh, so I was freaked out about the wake up call. So I I said to the guy, I said. Um, I got to get a wake up call, like, but I want it to be in my bedroom, like, not in the other room where I can't hear it. And he's like, "Oh, don't worry, you'll wake up." So I said, well, "What? What does that mean? What?" Like, he goes, "You'll wake up. Well, don't worry about that." So I said, "Why will I wake up? That doesn't make sense." He goes, "You'll wake up." Like he was like, a, like. A, and would you have <laughs> a shaman or something? What? <laughs> would you have woken up? <laughs> no, how would he know if I would have woken up by myself? But then I said, well, well I, I'm not going to wake up. I need a wake. That's why I need a wake up call. He goes, well, yes, we will wake you up. So I said, well, how will you wake me up? Because I can't hear the phone. He goes, we will wake you up. Don't worry about it. I guarantee you, we will wake you up. So then I said, well, I want to know how you wake me up. Now you're freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is there going to be like a troop of belly dancers that are yeah. going to come in at 6 o'clock in the morning? And <laughs> But his his waking up, it was just a guy pounding on my door this morning oh. after, after my 48 minutes of sleep. But they actually had a guy pound on your door. Yeah. So That's they a did. weird hotel because normally it's that here's the you know Mr. McDonald it's time to get up or yeah. whatever you know the, the well a lot of wake up calls now are it's not a human being or it's nobody it's just that the, the jangly ringing. hotel phone yeah. rings and you pick it up and there's no one there and you're like that's oh. frightening to me it is phones are frightening to me why is that Norm McDonald well you know how self not, you're not actually frightened by phones I know that yes I am no yeah no. you're not frightened by a phone I don't is like the sound phones. of a phone. Like, let's say uh, someone phones you, like prank calls you. Did you ever have People that? People don't do that not, anymore, not, though. Not prank calls. Caller ID. You, but I'm saying, like, just your phone rings. Mm -hmm. And then you go and answer it, and it's nobody, and you hang up. And then later the phone rings again. Like, it's jarring. It's it's even in horror movies. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Well, let's say, you know <laughs> you know how you have a cell phone, and it's, yes. the, it's the theme from the Beverly Hillbillies or whatever right, you want to put right, on it? Right, right, So it's like, da 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 you know, and uh, you answer it. And uh, that actually reminds me of my friend who has a very bad, depressing life, but his his uh, cell phone, right? The theme on it is the theme from Benny Hill. So it's and like, and da 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 And you picture little naked guys running yeah, around and it's fast It's a fun sound. The guy getting the slap yeah. on the back of the head. <laughs> but his life is really sad and well, depressing. Well, he's trying to cheer himself up. I mean, he goes for Benny Hill. <laughs> no, for but them. he'll go like, he goes like, ah, uh, because his wife has uh, has pancreatic cancer. Oh. Jesus, that stuff is rampant these yeah, days. Yeah, no, everybody's getting it. Since Patrick <laughs> Swayze, it's the big thing. Right. So Last uh, year, testicular cancer. This year, pancreatic. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so he'll go like, and his son won't talk to him, you know, and he goes, he'll go like, oh, God. I, I know that. I know that Harpy's going to phone and start telling me about her chemotherapy. I, I hope she doesn't phone, you know. Uh, I'm so depressed. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're talking about him talking about his wife, the Harpy? Yeah, his wife, the Harpy. Cause Who she says Harpy these days? How old is this guy that you're friends He's with? He's 68 years young. <laughs> oh, Oh, but she is a harpy. All she'll talk about is her uh, her pancreatic cancer. Well, you have pancreatic cancer. See how many other subjects come to mind for you. This you know what is the I guy think? he's married. Wow, you know, nice a, sympathy. You know, it's an interesting thing. What's a that? person dies now because Patrick Swayze was on the internet. And all of a sudden, they're courageous. Because they're battling and not just lying down for it. Well, well, I'm, I'm not going to... Well, not we gonna have to be... make them feel better about it. I mean, you've got pain. You don't have to lie. Cancer. I'm not going to be courageous. What are you going to do? I'm going to just be going, Oh, please, <laughs> don't take my grandson, not me. <laughs> oh, don't take me. I'm. If there is such a thing as a devil, I'd be glad to make a deal with you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die. Well, nobody does, Norm. Well, some people seem all right with it. I made actually, a, this is actually serious, I made a living will because they told me I should. Yeah, that's what and, they tell you. Uh, Do you have people to give the stuff to? I mean, but, you know, it's Do you have a harpy in your own life? Uh, uh, no. Oh, really? There's no, no a living will is not a will. A living will is what happens in case you become it's a vegetable. A do not resuscitate or yeah. take my organs. Or yeah. Are you giving away your organs? Do you have a... No. I'm, really? I'm saying this is kind of... Selfish, but I'm I'm t I'm uh, I told them not, never to pull the plug, never to. Uh, <laughs> you did not. What? I don't no, want to. Didn't. I said it. That's what I have in my living will because I don't want to die. So unfortunately, because uh, I had to discuss it with lawyers and everything, uh, it, it, it's going to run my money all out, and then you'll uh, wake up from this well, death defying well, illness. That's what I'm and... hoping that I'll wake up, but I, my money will run out, and so you know my child won't get any of my money or anything like that. So you have a child. Yeah, I have a child, but he won't be getting any of my money if I happen to go into a vegetative state because for a lengthy period. Did they bring that up to you? Like, wow, this is really selfish of you, Norm. Maybe you should consider putting some money aside for the boy. Uh, well, no, I'm not allowed to because they, I have to deplete all my money before then. I, <laughs> before then, they can they'll pay for it themselves. The hospital, you know, right? They they they're they're uh, forbidden not to 
keep you on life support. Is that even after all your funds have run out, they can't they say, can't well, you. he can't pay for it because anymore. Because I know what happens because I've seen it so many times. Like you're in, you're, you're the vegetable, you know, mm-hmm. and then they go, hey, they go take your, get your relatives around and they go, uh, what do you guys think? And then your relatives go, I think Norm said he wanted to die. You know, like, <laughs> I think he said he wouldn't want to be a burden and all this stuff. You know, they just lie. And so you're stuff. putting it right in the well. Of, I want to be a burden. Burden. <laughs> well, I, listen, I'm the vegetable. If if a, being a burden is my mother not going to her bridge game a couple a burden is my mother not going to her bridge game a couple times so she can come and touch my hand. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for burdening your life. Hey, Norm, are you in therapy at all? No. Really? <laughs> psychotherapy? Yeah. Have you ever like sat with a therapist? And No, I don't believe in psychotherapy. You don't? No. Really? Why is that? Uh, because I've read uh, psychotherapists. Yeah. And I don't agree with their... Uh, do you do your own psychoanalysis? Do you, do I you have my own beliefs. Right. But do you spend a lot of time in like sort of self... Reflection and yes, do I, you? I ruminate. Do you? Yeah, I have a theory that uh, that that people are in deep denial of death, right? And I'm not. You, I, you know, you don't want to. <laughs> no, no. I think I think most people don't think they're going to die. Well, I yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because just even in the last week, I'm like nobody really thinks they're going to die. Yeah. Like you just can't get your head around it because you're so busy living. Right. Like, it's oh, almost impossible to, to comprehend. Right. And everything you see is living. Even if someone else dies, it's always a shock because right. they've always been alive. Yeah. So so it's very hard. It is a hard thing to wrap your mind around. I'll be doing a lot of this at Cobb's Comedy Club. Are you are you a happy person, like, in general? Am I what? Are you a happy person? Because I, you always have a no. slight smile, but it's, you know, is are you a sad person? I, no, I mean, I think things are funny, right. so I laugh a lot. But that doesn't necessarily translate into, like, happiness. Yeah, well, on a... if I'm laughing, I'm happy, I guess. Where do you live? I live in uh, Southern California. Do you have a nice house? Uh, no, I live in a very small apartment. You have an apartment? Yes. Oh. I'm surprised that you don't have like a big, uh, you know, you're Norm MacDonald. Well, I don't like things. Oh. I never have. Really? No, I've always felt very burdened down by them. Do you have a pet? The only thing I, I, I can't throw away is when my child gets me a present. Yes. So so I have those things, but otherwise I, I, I just have a... How old a, is your kid? A bed... What? I don't just have a bed. <laughs> well, I have a. I don't. I have, you have a, a coffee pot. No, I don't. A teapot. No, I don't have. I, I always eat a, a microwave. I always eat at Joe's Diner that's near my apartment. Is this all true, or are you making this up? No, you just it's can't true. tell because he's got that grin. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Yeah, like, so you bring a girl home or a friend over, I don't and there's bring no girls. place for what? I don't. I don't have sex with girls or men. Wait a minute. Norm McDonald. Norm, you're a sexy dude. Uh, yeah, but I don't have... And you never, you never go out trolling. I mean, no I have girl. Had like, sex. Well, I realize well, you you're not a virgin. You've yeah, got a yeah. kid. No. When was the last time you had sex? Uh, probably 10 years ago. Shut, Shut up. up. Yeah. I have sex. I have, I, I have sex like by masturbating. And, yes. Yeah. But I, I find uh, sex very repetitive and dull and, and kind of pointless. You're kidding. This is a bit. No, it's not. I, Norm I, 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 had, I had a lot of sex when I was a young man. When I was young, when mm-hmm. I was uh, 19 or 20, I had a lot of sex. And it, it's, it's just the same thing over and over. Right. It feels really good. So. Start from the beginning and do well, it again. I mean, why would you? I mean, is it too much work doing Eating with ice cream. Or? Eating ice cream is really good too until you you're tired of it. You know. And the next day you try a different flavor. <laughs> There's thousands of flavors of ice cream. But not of women. Do you this, go to hookers ever? No, I've never been to a process. This either. attitude you have could be said for anything, though. I know. For anything, anything you do for more way, than once. Anything. 
Yeah, well, I, I don't do very much. You just don't like people in general. Yeah, you hate people. Or you hate women. Oh, no, I'm fascinated by people and by women. I, I'm just saying I don't need to. Uh, I don't but need... don't chicks throw themselves? I, I would think that after a show, you're hilarious. And well, to tell you the like, truth, I, I find, fascinated. to tell you the truth, I find sex to be very, a very filthy act. Are you a germaphobe? Uh, no, I'm, a I'm, I don't mean filthy. I mean filthy in the sense of shameful. Really? Were you raised Catholic? No. Oh. He's doing a bit. No, I'm not doing a bit. I, I, think, I, I find it really hard to believe you haven't had sex in 10 years. I think... Well, I, no, no. I think that sex <laughs> is shameful and that people have sex knowing that it's shameful. And uh, again, it's like death. They just live in this par uh, fool's paradise where they pretend it's not. I mean, obviously people don't have sex in public, so there must be some shame Some people it. do. But but it's well, it's, it's because you don't want to be caught in that compromise. You know, you're not exactly well, at, at your exactly. most attractive when you're having sex. There's all these well, there's social norms. And, you don't go so it's a to the bathroom in public either. But exactly. I'm not ashamed of that. Exactly. What? I'm not ashamed of going to the bathroom. It's part of taking in to stay alive. You have to evacuate. That's not. I'm not ashamed of that. That just comes with uh, the territory. Of course, and you have to. You have to uh, ejaculate too. But I evacuate and ejaculate uh, in in private. I don't do. I don't evacuate in front of a per another person. That's exactly what I'm saying. So you're not ashamed of it. You do it in order. To I am ashamed. But he of is it. ashamed of it. That's, That's why what I do he's it saying. Alone. Do you evacuate in front of people? No, but I'm saying I'm not ashamed. I'm just, it's just not polite. It's not because a social... It's, it's, it's something that you share with somebody else. I mean, are you, uh, is, it a, is it a fear of intimacy? Just do not let anybody too close? No, no, I'm not afraid for them. Who's your best friend? Them. Who is your best friend? <laughs> my, my best friend? Your best friend. Who do you call if, if you have a problem or something is going down in your life? Who do you call? I don't. I try to like. I try to look at life headlong. <laughs> I feel you, are you telling me you don't have a confidant in your life that you call up and say, you know, I'm just not. I'm not feeling too hot. You know, can, you know, someone, someone to talk crap out with. Or... No, I don't. I used to do that kind of stuff, but what I, happened? I came to the realization that that we're all plunging headlong into Somebody death. Somebody hurt you. Who no. cares? So that's why you should live. You so, you only have so, so long, to and then me, you're gonna croak. If you're plunging down an <laughs> abyss into headlong into death, the idea of of grabbing on to another human being just to touch them for a moment on your way seems futile to me. It seems more pathetic than facing it. Just to me personally, I I, I don't condemn people for doing it, but. I don't. I, I like looking. I try to look at life square in the eye, as terrifying as it is, and it is, it is the most terrifying thing there is. What being alive? Yeah, but because it's being not... alive means means dying. But Norm, that is such a fatalistic way to look at it. There's so much in life that you are denying yourself, and I think that you think you have reasons for it. But if you don't have someone that you can, do, don't you ever do you ever cry? You oh, cry yeah. all by yourself. Of you do. I There's cry. no one that you can call. You need a therapist. Oh no. no. You need to be in therapy. <laughs> no. I no, think no. somebody broke you. No. Somebody no. either hurt you or broke your heart or you were betrayed by a friend. You don't trust people. You won't let anybody get close to you. You hide it all behind no the, the, the smiling me. clown. No, no one did anything to me. I was just the smiling, somewhat mean spirited was, clown. Uh, no one did. Alone. I'll you weren't broken when you live were born. alone, and I'll die alone, just like my father did. And uh, he didn't. He had kids. At one point, he was married. He, right, but he, but he, he died alone. For it. Why did he die alone? Because chose, everyone, were you, are everyone you dies bummed? alone. Where, where? Did I mean, he all die? you can hope for is someone watching you die. But I don't really. Well, want you won't that. have that because you don't have any friends. <laughs> no, I don't want to see. I don't want someone to watch me die. You just said you want your mother to miss her bridge game and come and put her hand on yours. Oh, well, that's when I'm uh, in a vegetative state in order to stay alive. You know what I mean? Anything to stay alive. You know, I was confused by you last time you were on here. I didn't. I was like, what are his motivations? Well, wouldn't what you like he... to stay alive? Wouldn't you like to live forever? Not really. 
Well, you're only saying that because it's impossible. Because I know it's impossible. However, I'll yeah. tell you something. If a vampire came along right now and could give me immortality, I would totally yes, go for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially with those superhuman strengths that they have. Listen, Plus, gotta, they're sexy. I'm taking some calls for you. Okay. You ready for this? <laughs> okay. Uh, Chunky, you're on the air with Norm McDonald, who's at Cobbs all weekend. Go ahead. Hey, Norm. Uh, listen, man, I don't know when you went Colonel Kurtz and went up the river, but you totally remind me of uh, Marlon Brando when he's uh, in a pocket. <laughs> lips now <laughs> the horror the horror uh i will come and watch you die norm no oh, problem that's so buddy. sweet chunky thank and you chunky needs say, friends too i want to say you've made me feel dirty and i'm i'm all right with that <laughs> all right. norm let me ask you something seriously what do you yeah. do for fun like any one name one thing you do for fun for fun? For fun. Like, I'm going to have some fun tonight or today. I've got nothing today. to do today. Here's what I'm going to do. Is it spend money? It's not Golf. go shopping? You don't get. You don't decorate the place? What do you do? Um, uh, some, I, I guess the only thing I do is I like to read sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're lying. I do. Uh, that's what I mean. That, that makes me Do you play video me. games? Do you play cards? Do you... I, 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 Solitaire, I, I what? Read, uh, I read a lot of uh, Mark Twain. That, that, There's only so much Mark Twain. I and know, uh, not you're, much, actually. Yeah. I'm reading <laughs> letters from Hawaii now, something I've never read before. But uh, I read like stuff that... I read a lot of literature. And Do you I, go to movies? I reread it a lot. No. You don't go to movies? Uh, but I did see a movie. I saw Gran Torino. And? Yeah. yeah, that's a good movie. You liked it? Yeah. Did you go alone? Yeah. <laughs> Of course you did. <laughs> Tim, you're on. I'm running to the pharmacy right now to uh, uh, fill my uh, antidepressant prescription right now. No doubt. <laughs> oh, the problem with antidepressants is you, you, then you don't face life. I mean, why not just do You're not facing... Just so, just, I have a news flash for you. You're not facing life. You're not living your life. You're waiting it out. You are waiting it out, Norm. Norm, you have everything. From the outside, you're hilarious. Uh -huh. You are a good-looking guy. You're famous. You have beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> you're <laughs> you're Norm McDonald, and you are you're 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 shattering my image of you. Like you could you could be a player. Like you're you could have whatever you want. And clearly, you want nothing, and you just want to be no, depressed. No, you're depressed. No, no, I'm not you need depressed to at see all. Someone. I'm in no way depressed. But having nothing and having something are exactly the same thing. What are you reading, Carlos Castaneda? I don't know. Who that is. Those are some books you should read. <laughs> okay, but all I'm saying is, it, since eternity, uh, since life is a, f if you know mathematics, uh, a, a fraction of infinity is um, is zero, no matter what the fraction is. You know what I'm saying? No. You could live a hundred years, a thousand years, a billion years. Uh, it's all zero if it's on a continuum of eternity. So it doesn't matter what you do or what you don't do. So why don't you go crazy? Why don't you go effing crazy? <laughs> I don't go crazy. <laughs> Sounds like you I have. don't go crazy because I don't allow myself the... Uh, Any fun in, or joy in your life. I don't, oh, I forgot no, about that I don't that allow part. myself the delusions that other people allow themselves. So I know you have to go crazy in some way to survive life, but I try to not do that. Steve, you're on the air <laughs> with allegedly not crazy Norm McDonald. Norm, full of it. Full of it? Uh -huh. I can't believe you guys are going along with this. I mean... So you don't believe it. You think he's been laid in the last 10 years, and he's got he a has. very full, happy life, and he's just showing us this, like, pretend course, Norm McDonald. You can't see how long he can drag you guys along with it. You guys are just going along with it. No, we're you know not. What? This is it. Yeah. That is it. I've been That's... saying it's a bit all along. Aren't you listening? Well, either way, it's the same. <laughs> oh, my God. It happens to be true, but it doesn't really matter <laughs> if it's believed or not. So you're telling me some little honey comes up to you at the show, and she's like, and she's nice, and and she also reads. I'm not real. I'm not interested in she, sex. She loves uh, Mark think, Twain, and I she's like, let's go. And she's not even offering sex. She's not even offering sex. I mean, a lot of women aren't interested in sex. She's all, hey, let's, you know, it's late. You want to go have a cup of coffee? I would love to talk to you about that book you mentioned on stage. You know, Mark Twain's my favorite too. Uh, I, I think I would talk to some people, but I, I don't. I'm not much interested in, in small talk. So let me ask you this about women, though. So you don't even have physical attraction before you get to the point of talking yourself out of it. There's never a moment where you're like, "Wow, she's really pretty." 
Oh, like no, I, I think I'd she's love hot. To tap that. No, I'm not. I, I think I can see that she's pretty and stuff like that, but I'm far beyond. <laughs> I'm not a child. I'm not a child. When you're you know what alone. I mean? I, I, if I look at a game of Monopoly, I don't go. I gotta play that. If I look at a shiny <laughs> bead, I don't go. I have to have that and roll it around in my fingers. You know, when you when as the scriptures say, you know, when when you're a boy, you do boys things, and when you're an, when you're a man, you men you, still do it. I don't know those, if you're. Well, I know they act like boys, but why know, is that boyish? That's human. Humans no, it's have child. That. It's being a child for your whole life. I know most people are children for their whole life, and it's a way of having fun. So you think you're more evolved? No, no, it's just no. I don't think I'm more evolved. I just think that I'm, I'm not a child. Not I just I'm not a child. When you're home, I'm not the same as I am when I was five years old. When you're home in your squalid, empty apartment, all by yourself, and it's uh, not squalid. Whatever it's a, you ascetic. say, there's nothing in it. <laughs> squalid means filthy. It's, it's ascetic. All right, it's empty in your yes. in your tiny, empty, lightless apartment, lightless and lifeless. So you're in there. You're all alone. No pets, right? No. You got nothing. No. You go home to the empty apartment and the yeah. spider that lives in the corner yeah. and its <laughs> descendants. Uh, and you're you're on the couch and you're like, you know what? I got nothing else to do. And I, so I think I'll get myself. What do you think about when you close your eyes? What do you fantasize about? I there don't, must I don't, be something oh, going question. on there. Fan- I don't fantasize. You don't picture some boobs. You no. don't. Oh, oh, you mean when I'm, I'm saying what? Uh, you must have you some fantasy. You mean when fantasy. I masturbate? When you get yourself. Please don't say that because it's... Oh. We're not a news show. Oh, that, we can't even use medical meant? terms. Yes. That's what she means. When you're oh. abusing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you drink? No, I don't drink. You don't no. drink or smoke? No. Smoke pot? No, I don't. Any, are you on uh, Vicodin? No, no, no. I want to. I want to face. I want to face uh, life uh, four square. Wait, go back to the question. Okay. So you close your eyes. You're on the couch. Uh-huh. You're like, well, I guess it's time. I got nothing <laughs> else to do. Uh-huh. I mean, you purposely not masturbate. I mean, uh, fantasize. Oh, Jesus. Do you purposely not fantasize so I it'll take to, longer I, and eat up more of this life no, that you know is going no, away I try soon? No, I try to not fantasize. Uh, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I try not to fantasize because I think that's madness. What? Well, pretending that you're doing something Don't even pretend. Not, just picture. But, I mean, that's pr- that's pretending. So you don't need any inspiration and you don't care how long it takes. Uh, no, I don't need inspiration. Like, uh... Like, uh the evacuation thing. You don't need inspiration for that. It's just a bodily function. <sighs> Brenda, you're on with Norm McDonald. Who's at Cobbs all weekend long? Hi, Norm. What? My husband and I really wanted to see you, but I have to tell you, you kind of made us uncomfortable when we saw you in Honolulu. We thought, oh, maybe maybe it's not a good idea. He, he doesn't like us already. Tell the story. Oh, oh. Tell the story, Brenda. <laughs> Wait, so you're in Hawaii. Uh, okay, you run so, into Norm McDonald? No, it was more of a pass-by, and it was pretty clear the eye contact that he like please don't talk to me please don't even pretend like you recognize me at all just just let me pass on by with my folks and and call it a day so no, everything really? that he's telling you everything that he's telling no, you I this apologize morning apologize for that I no no don't apologize but well, let me just tell you let me tell um them I that i don't usually ever do that you don't use it well I mean, it was it was a, a layover. He- Did you say hello to me or is it? What was that? Did you say hello or? I tried to. We smiled at you and everything, and and you were coming our direction, and we were going the other way, and you're really shifty eyed. We we made eye contact for a, a, quite some time. Oh. And uh, my husband was nudging me, and he's like, "Norm McDonald." I'm like, "I know, I know." And and. You know, we didn't want to bother you or anything because we're at the airport. We're in Honolulu. We figured uh-huh. you're well, on vacation. He's at the airport. I mean, he could oh, have no, been. No, I apologize. You know, there, was, could... there was no one else around, though. It was outdoors, and he was with his folks, and it was just his family and my family. And we really wanted to just say, we love your work, and and that's it. But, I mean, just that he made eye contact with us, and he was really shifty-eyed about it. We could tell we are like, okay. He really doesn't want to be bothered now, right now. Yeah, shifty eye almost implies that he's got something to hide. Yeah, he, but that just might be he's his just a way. little bit of an uncomfortable guy. Like, no, I, no, no, no. I, actually, I p- people come up to me all the time, and I talk to them endlessly. Do you really? Oh, I wanted to chase after you, but then I didn't want to seem like a crazy fan or anything. Uh, we just wanted to shake your hand and say, you know, 
enjoyed your work over the years. And oh, that's nice. But at the same time, we wanted to respect your, your space. And I, I thought maybe I could confirm that there might be some truth to everything you're saying today, even if it is a bit. All right. Thank you, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Oh, well, whatever. So you go to Hawaii, though? Pardon me? You went to Hawaii? Yes. Recently? The last one. I, I go to Hawaii every Thanksgiving. Why? Because uh, I take my uh, whole extended family there. For them? Yeah. I don't and know. they count on you for that. Do you pay for you foot the bill because you're Norm MacDonald? Yes, I do. Yeah. You do. But you find zero pleasure in that, I'm sure. Oh, um, no, he must well, like I it. That's family time. great pleasure in my son being happy. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. How old is your son? He's, uh, uh, what, 10, 15? <laughs> you liar! He's six! <laughs> He's a six-year-old. You just about that you had sex in the last ten years. No, my son's sixteen years old. He's <laughs> six. No, he's sixteen years he's old. He's sixteen. Yeah. So is he a confidant? Do you call him and you know, do you ever share personal, you know, trials and tribulations oh, and, no. and triumphs? I would never do that to a child. He's sixteen. <laughs> well, I mean, he, I, I, as you have said, he can't be a child forever. Uh, when are you gonna put the hard realities of life on him? Um, well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> that is an interesting question because uh, my, I actually uh, have love for my son. Yes. Like deep, of course. deep love. He's your son. And so uh, um, I don't want to damage him with... The so, way you were damaged. With the harsh reality. Oh, no, I had a great... No, but I, I, don't, I don't want to damage him with any viewpoints I may have because he's not ready yet for reality. <laughs> I think children aren't ready for reality for a while. But I do tell them that education is pointless and, and things <gasps> like that. What does his mother say? <laughs> she thinks that he should go to college and so Yeah. Yeah. He should. And you're not like, everyone can grow don't up and be waste a comedian. your money. Yeah, I'm saying it's it's just arbitrary nonsense. You know, it's uh, I tell him even the classes he takes now, it's it's just it's just ridiculous. You know? <laughs> That algebra has no meaning, and none unless of this he stuff good, is. becomes an engineer. Well, unless he becomes. Do you a, have no <laughs> hope for this? Child? Unless he becomes a math teacher, math professor. But I mean, you know, the. You think it's a coincidence that they have six subjects out of ten billion that they teach in school? <laughs> And then you still pick one of the arbitrary. 10 billion to focus on. No, no, they, you have to. You, you they need don't, they basic don't teach you math. 10 billion. You need basic language. It's lovely when the school has art or music, which none of them do anymore. A little yeah. PE to keep us from getting fat. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. No, they have a little some good science, things. some they of the some basic science things. stuff. Sure they do. Of course yeah. they do. No, I, I tell him if he wants to go to college he should uh he should have a goal, you know. To be He can't, he's sixteen. No kid at sixteen has a goal. Their goal is to, like to be a rock star. Oh, or you know have sex. Well, right. I mean yeah. that's actually the goal. Does he want to have sex? Uh, or did you tell him, oh, I don't bother with that? <laughs> I, I that's have, that. There's I, nothing for you in that. It's just repetitive. It's over and over. I, I Same thing. Discuss something like that with them. I hold them in too high esteem to discuss it. Um, we are. We're super short on time. I've already missed my traffic thing. I'm fascinated. I don't know whether to <laughs> slap you or hug you. Like seriously, I feel like someone needs to shake you and knock some sense into you. Uh, we are going to take a short break. Or maybe Norm. you. What? Maybe you. Knock sense that. into me? No, I'm doing fine. I'm I'm good over here. Oh, me too. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know from broken people, Norm McDonald. We'll be right back. It's Allison, 97.3. Uh, Norm is at Cobbs all weekend long.